what's going on world what's going on youtube what's going on internet it's your girl andy here welcome back to my channel welcome back to my bedroom and welcome back to another episode of me I just want to reiterate this is a safe space safe space for you me her she and they and um yeah let's get right into this video y'all know i love to ramble and i'm trying to save everybody the time this video is going to be on oshun valentine's day is right around the corner it's february 1st it's also black history month you know what i'm saying ocean represents self-love she represents represents femininity she represents self-worth self-value playfulness youthfulness and i just thought you know if you can't love yourself how in the hell are you gonna expect somebody else to love you so i just wanted to kind of just reiterate the importance of self-love and you know if you, you really do have to love yourself first maybe some of the things that she represents might just be a good story for you to hear and I'm here to share. So Oshun, she is actually the youngest Orisha in the Yoruba pantheon. pantheon. She's also one of the most powerful, like most feminine goddesses and deities, you know, she represents femininity. She represents that nice girl, the youthful, light, feminine, the sweet girl. But she is also a protector. I did another video on Sekhmet, who has a similar rep reputation of being a healer, but also a protector and the goddess of war. So I just think that, that there's a, there's always that theme around femininity because femininity, we tend to downplay its value and its power. She's a river goddess, okay? So she represents the water. Water also represents fertility, purity, love, femininity, which is also all the things that she is related to as well. Goddess, what does water do? Not only does it help nurture, heal, and provide for you and you know provide food for you as well as keep you alive it can also wipe you out it can wipe out your homes you you can drown you know so the duality of femininity you know we always tend to just because we're in such a patriarchal society we tend to forget and dismiss and overlook the power of femininity and i just kind of wanted to touch on some stories of the power of femininity that oshun amplifies in the yorba pantheon i wanted to to share that even though she represents a lot and there's a lot of different things that you could talk about there's two specific stories that i'm going to go over and um let's just get right into it and she's a river goddess she is always seen wearing gold yellow and when you look at in the chakra system the solar plexus is the yellow chakra it's willpower it's self-control confidence and self-esteem and confidence and self-esteem are two words that really do represent Oshun. She's that girl, okay? And she knows she's that girl. She is always known and um, she's known for her beauty. She's seen as a beautiful woman. She's seen as a very captivating woman and she knows that she's captivating. Not only is she playful and soft, but she knows how to use her femininity to get what she wants. Oshun was actually one of the 17 original deities in the Yorba Pantheon that um, came down to earth from the heavens to create life on earth. The creation story has a lot of elements to it, but I just want to focus on her role. She came down with 16 male gods. All these male gods thought that they didn't need her. They didn't need her role. They didn't, they overlooked the power of the feminine and they didn't think that they needed her to create life on earth. So she being the posed and full of self-love, I don't want to say egoless, but she didn't let her ego lead her in this situation. So they said they don't need her to create life on earth. Um, so she said, okay. So she went away somewhere, probably looking at her own reflection and knowing that she's that girl, okay? And unbothered because, unbothered, because why would she? Because she already knew. Now, they believe they can make life without her. But Miss Thing, Miss Thing, Miss Oshun, she knew her worth and she wasn't about to waste her time tripping over these men. A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all can learn from that. <laughs> hey, me too though, me too, me too. So the men, they failed. They failed when they were trying to create their to life. So they went back to Oldumare. I probably said that wrong, but Oldumare was like the god of the gods basically. And he's the one that created them and he's also the one that sent them down from, from the heavens. So all the male gods came up to him. They told him like, oh, they couldn't do it. And he's all like, well, I sent 17 of y'all down. Who are we missing? Because y'all need everybody. And they were like, oh, well, you know, we told Oshun we didn't need her. And he was like, but I said I needed all of y'all, which is why I chose all of y'all to do this because I needed you. Like the fuck? Y'all are dumb and you need her. So go find wherever she is. So the boys, the boys, pause. And I think this is a perfect example of how 
in this patriarchal society and male dominated society, we always tend to undervalue and underestimate women. We also under, underestimate the value and the power of femininity. They saw creating life, creating life on earth as a man's job, but who is the birth givers? Who creates life? Where does life grow in nine, for nine months? Who possesses birthing bodies? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like the ignorance. When they finally found Oshun and they asked her like, Okay, yeah, we we fucked up. You know, we do need your help to make life on Earth, and with no hesitation, with no woo 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 woo, with none of that, Miss Oshun, this thing, she was like, okay, she's like, okay, she agreed with no, with no fuss. She didn't put, she didn't put them through the ringer, even though she didn't put them through the ringer, even though she can. There is wrath that Oshun does possess, but she didn't, she didn't give it to them. She didn't give it to them at this day because she already knew their little fragile male egos was going through a lot by realizing that they fucked up. Especially because he went to Big Boss. He went to Big Boss Oldumare and he was like, you missing me. Okay, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? You get me, you get me. So then Oshun came down to the earth, you know, and she brought water onto the earth. After putting water into the earth, you know, she helped create humans and other animals and things like that onto onto planet earth. Feminine energy is creation. Feminine energy creates things and Oshun is a perfect example of that and this story is a perfect example of how in our society we forget about that and also women, like we are the ones in control, we are the ones in power. The feminine energy represents subconscious. Subconscious is where anything manifests and begins. Everything starts as a thought in the brain. My favorite example of this is when you look at architecture, when you look at the Eiffel Tower, right, for example. That statue was first an image in someone's head, and then it was on a piece of paper, and then it became a 3D model, and then it became a construction site, and then became the real thing. So there are steps into bringing things to the physical world, which masculine energy does tend to possess more of because it's the doing and the action, right? But everything starts in the mind, just like creation. You know, when you're looking at being pregnant, nine months, you know, the seed has been planted, but just like a, a new moon, the seed has been planted, but it's not until the full moon that you reap what you sow. It's not until nine months later that you see the child. See what I'm saying? You can't create without the feminine energy. You, and patriarchy is constantly trying to push feminine out of spaces. But I guess that was more of like, I don't think there was too much about self-love in that. I guess that the moral of that story was really like, you know, understanding her worth and her value because she knew, she knew she was that girl and she didn't really let them phase you. And I think, you know, that's something all of us really understand, like just, just being overlooked, especially black women, women of color, non-binary, anybody that is just has been labeled as other, you know, constantly being put aside. Our roles in society is is crucial and you can't erase us, you can't erase our histories, and you can't erase the spaces that we are in. I already touched on earlier how Oshun, she represents that light, sweet girl, feminine energy, you know, but feminine energy always has a dark side to it. I have a video on that as well, I could probably link it, dark feminine energy, but she represents the sweet girl, the sweet energy, but she, being the river goddess, she gives life. But at the same time, she can take it. And there's other stories where Oshun flooded the earth, drowned crops, and even flood the earth, um, drowned crops, or even, you know, withheld water and created droughts. Once the middle ground is reached, you know, she always gives, she always gives the waters back or she always takes it back. Like she, it's not done for no reason. To reiterate Oshun, she teaches us the power of self-love, self-admiration, and also self-reflection. Feminine traits are always very receptive traits. Like I mentioned, the subconscious. Subconscious is an internal and a reflective state of mind. Subconscious is always processing um, and sending you messages to bring to light in the present world, you know? If you're always getting dreams of a family member that you haven't reached out to, that's your subconscious. Sending you a, a, a reflection that you haven't reached out to this person in a while and it's time to put some love into that relationship. She also has the sensual aspect of her. There's another story where um, Ogun, Ogun is the god of uh, civilization and metals. The story is one day he just didn't want to work or he was depressed, something like that. He was just, he was fed up. Ogun was fed up, okay? And Ogun went into the forest and he stayed in the forest and he said, enough is enough. I'm taking a break. Y'all need me. I don't need you. <laughs> he said, y'all need me. I don't need you. One by one, 
you know, Shango, Eshu, Yemoya, all the other um, deities are coming, you know, to him one at a time, you know, trying to convince him like, hey, you know, shit is going, shit is going crazy. It's going crazy out here without you. Like, we need you, bro. And he's just like, no, one, one by one. No, 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 no. Oshun is known for having a honey pot. And honey also being, you know, a gold yellow tone. She represents in always seeing the color gold. Uh, peacock feathers as well. Her honey pot, that's that's her sweetness. You know what I'm saying? That's that sugar. That's that's that sugar spice and everything that's not nice. You know what I'm saying? The feminine, the feminine juices. <laughs> okay, let me not make it sexual, but she's known to have honey pot with her. And honey represents femininity and also represents sensuality and also does represent, you know, feminine organs, okay? And I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. They didn't want her to go and try to get him out. They said, oh, he's dangerous. You know, he's a big dude. And you're the baby of the Orishas. She knows what she can do. She knows what she can do. So she goes into the forest and she kind of like, kind of like a... I guess kind of like a belly dancer. Well, I don't want to say, I say belly dancer in the sense where it's like, she's going around, but not really like, she's going around him, but not really like paying attention to him. So she's not really like, she's dancing for him, but she's not dancing on him, you know what I'm saying? So it's like around, you know, and she knows she's moving her body, she's being sensual, she's being feminine energy. And what does that do? It, it hypnotizes the masculine, okay? Ogun, she's not she's not saying, oh, come follow me, nothing like that. She's just being herself. She, you know, playing with that little honey pot or whatever. Um, I don't know if she put it on his face. I don't know if that's a part of the story. I could be wrong. I could be making that up. You could fact check me and leave a comment down below. <laughs> Go ahead, I won't be offended. She takes her little honey pot and she's doing her little dances and everything for him. You know what I'm saying? She do a little woo woo pop pop. He starts following her. So she keeps, you know, throwing the honey, throwing the honey, doing her little moves, doing her little moves, not really paying attention to him, doing her, her dance for herself. And this man follows her all the way from the middle of the forest or wherever in the forest they were out of the forest. And that is how she got him out. She did what all the other gods and goddesses couldn't do. Power of sensuality, you know, she possesses passion, confidence, high self-esteem, you know, that solar plexus energy. How else would you be able to do this? You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to be confident in yourself, confident in your body and possess that self-love. You have to be able to have those to yourself and give that to yourself before you can give that to other people. And I guess I should probably end this video with some ways to make yourself feel more confident, some ways to tap into your sensuality. Even though we talked about the solar plexus ch chakra, she does also possess a lot of the sacral, 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 sacral chakra energy, which is definitely the, the root of femininity. Maybe, you know, meditating on your sacral or solar plexus chakras, you know, wearing orange and yellow, doing meditations, yoga, okay, moving your hips in a circular motion dancing, twerking for yourself, putting on something that makes you feel good, putting on some lipstick, you know, doing whatever it is that makes you feel like beautiful. Look yourself, in, look in the mirror. She points to her mirror. Eye gazing, you know, looking at yourself in your eyes, okay? Telling yourself things that you love about yourself. I love my lips, my eyes, whatever it is, telling yourself these things daily. You have to shift the narrative that you have in your head. Walk confidently. But when, you're, when you're walking down the street, play music that makes you feel like you're the baddest bitch on the block. Okay, because it's your block, all right? And, and you know, have them shoulders back, okay? And walk, strut, own it, own it. Make sure your energy is felt, but not in an aggressive way, okay? Not in an aggressive way, but you know, make sure that you, you, you feel felt. I'm not saying do the most. I'm just saying take up space proudly, okay? You know, walk with that confidence. Love your body, move your body, you know? Dance sensually for yourself. Listen to somebody that makes you feel, you know, a little erythrial and just move your hips, okay? Maybe do a dance class. Do self-care. What's your skincare routine like? Do you drink enough water? Do you eat enough fruit? You know, do things that things that are self-care for you. Do you make your bed in the morning? Okay, do you journal? Do you talk to yourself positively? You are the first relationship that you have with yourself. So how do you talk to yourself? Feminine energy is always, is always associated with water because what does water do? It flows flows it goes it doesn't stop and it's present you know connect with your core maybe in meditation 
um, having your hands, like rubbing your hands together for you so you can feel that static energy a little bit, you know, maybe for a few seconds. And then just having your having your hands over your stomach while you meditate. Maybe partake in a little self-pleasure, okay? Breathing exercises, but moving your body in ways that you don't normally do, especially in yoga. There's something that really just... Moving your body is key here, okay? That's what I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm trying to get at. But that's not the purpose of this video. If you want me to do a video on ways to, you know, connect with your feminine energy or grow your confidence, whatever it may be, I can do a video on that. I just wanted to share those stories of Oshun and just the power of self-love, the power of femininity, the power that being soft possesses. You don't always have to be rah, rah, rah to get your point across, you know? Um, that's a very masculine approach to do things. And I just think it's important to practice self-love. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of self-admiration and self-reflection is key here as well. Journaling, I don't know if I said journaling earlier, but yeah, that's the video. I kind of went off on a tangent. I just wanted to leave y'all with some tips, how you connect with her, how to, you know, tap into that energy, meditating, thinking of Oshun, you know, wearing the color yellow, um, wearing gold, gold eyeshadow, gold clothes, gold jewelry, you know, owning those elements of her, okay? That's my video, everyone. Um, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you so much, and I will see you in my next video. It really does mean a lot to me. My channel has been growing pretty fast, making me want to keep posting for y'all. I really appreciate it, and, you know, thank you for the comments that I get that also tell me to keep going, so I can't let y'all down, right? Um, but stay warm out here. It's the middle of the winter, so that's why I'm saying stay warm and drink lots of water and smile and look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you love you. And yeah, have a great day. Thanks. Bye.